We're going to stay in Winnipeg. Because at that tournament, again, it was a tournament that Klaus Darga took first place. He faced the great Dane himself, Bent Larson. This time from Black. C4, English opening, Anglo-Indian defense. King's Knight variation. E6, Knight C3 brings us to the Hedgehog system. Bishop B4 transposes to the Nimzo English opening. Slightly different than the Nimzo Indian where there is a pawn on d4 and these knights haven't come out yet. Nimzo English variation. Queen c2, c5, a3, bishop a5, g3 bringing the getting ready to fan kettle. Knight c6, bishop g2, and castles. This opening will be found in volume A as an alpha section 17 volume a section 17 the game continued with black uh, with white castling d6 d3 a6 now normal move here is actually h6 proactive move preventing mo ideas like bishop g5 so h6 the most common he played a6 much more remote in fact h6 is played 10 times as often almost almost 12 times as often but a6 rook to b1 bishop to d7 uh, another line here that is played is rook to b8, but bishop to d7 is the first unique move of the game. So two other lines in the database is rook b8 and one game pawn to e5. But Darga plays bishop to d7. And so we have a unique position in the database, bishop f4. Striking at the undefended D pawn, Queen E7, improves and protects. Pawn E4, now pawn to H6. B4, striking at the bishop, a set of pawns. Oh, he didn't trade back. Okay, he's not trading back because to do so results in an attack on his queen. So instead, he retreats the knight. And I thought surely he would take this pawn. Hello, K. Posta Agassi. Well, he attacked the bishop, bishop e3. And now, rather than take the pawn, I sh thought surely take that pawn. He plays b3. Why not take that pawn? I don't know why b3. I mean, b3, he could just take it, and he does. Why not take this pawn? I, I like this move. Maybe he didn't want this to be taken. Maybe that's his thinking. So he gives up the pawn and allows the rook to take so that he can play b5? Yes! He did it so he could play b5. Knight b4. You may be saying, well, then why not take the pawn? Why not c takes b5? And after a takes b5, don't you get two pawns? Well, not so fast. Not so fast. Notice the relationship between the rook and the bishop. 
And so a fork can be thrown. And after knight takes, pawn takes. You don't take the rook yet because the knight's defending. And then it's two pieces. You desperado here. He may just desperado himself. So it's pretty complex. And I think this is probably, you know, you get this under attack. This is probably a touch better for black. The rooks are going to double. So he played b5, knight to b4. Instead, bishop takes, now pawn takes, and now pawn to a5. Wanting to make a passer. B takes, B takes c4, D takes uh, c4, and now knight takes a5. Rook to c3, rook f to c8. And now knight to h4. I'm gathering he's pushing his f man. I can't... Well, maybe he is coming to f5 instead to hit the queen and cause some trouble there. Because there's potential attacks here. Knight c6 obstructs the bishop. Queen to d2. Now... Knight to g4. Now knight to f5. Indeed was played. And the bishop trades itself off for that knight. And with this knight obstructing, that rook is as safe as a baby in his betty by. Well, I thought he was going to take this bishop. He didn't. He played e4. Now, why e4? Okay, it obstructs the bishop so that he can move his knight. Why not put the rook somewhere betterer? More betterer. Not real clear on the purpose of pawn to e4. It opens a square for either of his knights to occupy. Although it's got to be the G knight, because if you do this, then this pawn's being captured with tempo. All right, he played bishop to f4, rook d8. Rook d1, knight f6. Bishop takes pawn on d6. That can't be right. That cannot be right. Now my current rating, mush mush, is 1,849. My peak rating was 1,917. This cannot be right. Opening this uh, line against this queen. Am I a GM? No, I'm a grand patser. I'm a grand patser, not a grand master. We talked about how to become a grand master earlier. Become a grand patser also has its requirements. You have to um, have blundered against opponents from at least three different nations. And you have to have done so in tournaments on at least three different continents. I've blundered on four different continents. I've blundered here in North America. I've blundered in South America. I've blundered in Europe. And I've blundered in Africa. I am a grandfather as well, that's true. My grandpa. Just as of last April, my daughter had our first grandchild. 
All right, bishop takes d6 can't be right. Rook takes, queen takes, and then bada bing, bada boom. So that was a mistake. And now you have a queen and a knight against two rooks. Oof. Let's come back and look at it again. What could white have done differently here? That was a clear blunder. Maybe just play queen b2. Anything to get out of the line of fire of this rook. So queen b2, or queen e1, something like that. But not bishop takes, allowing rook takes. I know what you're thinking. Well, he's getting a free pawn. No, he's not. Because the rook comes over, and you say, well, why doesn't the queen take the queen? Well, because after check, you can see you're still down a full piece. Um, and obviously, queen takes rook. You just end up losing your queen. So... I'm not sure. I, I don't think he really appreciated the rook slide here that was available. So that was uh, the turning point in the game for sure. Queen d7. Rook c5. Hey, there's a donation. Wow. Two doll hairs. Thank you, Mishmush. Mishmush gave me two doll hairs. That's very generous. Thank you very much. Knight B4? Bishop F1. Okay, knight d3, capture, 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 queen b7. This guy is to be a matter of concern, so I mean, white still has play here. I mean, the pawn, remember, when the pawn crosses the equator, it becomes worth two points, then four, then six. So this is technically a four-point piece here in value. So in other words, this pawn offsets this knight in, in point value. And then you have two rooks against a queen. So materially... You have some validation and compensation for white. Although white, how he's really going to make this pawn good is going to be the real question. And the activity of this queen, you know, out in the open like this, this queen is lethal. Well, he played rook to c1. Knight to d7 obstructs that. Pawn. He doubles his rooks behind that pawn, but that's, again, that's not really going to do you much good. Uh, it looks like white is saying, I'm going to play for a draw here. Queen e4, rook d5, king f8, pawn h3, king e8, Rook 1 to d4. Queen b1 check. Rook back to d1. Queen back to e4. He repeats 
This time queen to e1 check, king to g2. King to d8. Now the king takes up obstruction duty, liberating the knight to carry out other duties. g4. Now knight b6, striking the rook. Rook c5. Queen a1. Rook d3. Now queen a6. Rook d1. Queen... He also could have played it here. Rook c c1. Knight d5. That's pretty clever. Hello, Karpov's butler. He cannot take, as you can see, because that would allow a fork. But he took. Huh, he took anyway. And allowed the fork. Okay, this is all over but the crying now. The advanced passer is now gone. So let's just see how he finished it off. Just go into Pac-Man mode here. And just start cleaning the house. And here, White resigned. Now get these numbers. Bent Larson actually had a better accuracy and and best move ratio than did Victor Darga or Klaus Darga. White's accuracy was 95.01 with a best move ratio of 55.9%. 9501 compared to 94.74 by Darga. 55.9% best move compared to 54.2% by Darga, and yet <laughs> Darga emerges victorious. So it all came down to one really big blunder here by Bent Larson. The bishop takes pawn blunder. He did not appreciate the slide puzzle that Darga had at his disposal. Rook captures bishop, opening a vacancy for the other rook, and bada bing, bada boom. 